So it's kind of funny. I was watching a bunch of these kind of like how I became who I am today type videos of these successful people. And one of the trends I noticed the most was like in bodybuilders, you see so many of them telling their childhood story and a huge percentage were bullied or were fat or were skinny. And it caused a lot of like emotional issues for them because there's a lot of pain surrounding that issue. And I thought about how common it is for people to become successful because of adversity and how far more people are crushed by it. And it made me think why so few people turn that adversity into the fuel to become who they eventually are. Now in this video, I wanna share a little bit about what I think on channeling your inner demons to be more successful. What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book Master of the Day. So I think what's interesting about your inner demons is that the first thing is that they really do determine your trajectory in life. Because think about how many kids there are that are beaten and abused by their parents and then they don't do anything admirable or anything just conversation worthy with their life. And I think there are so many people that are crushed by the adversity, far more that are crushed than people who use that and channel it into becoming the next level version of themselves. And you could think about that in terms of money or in terms of relationships or in terms of fitness. Like there are so many people who are like, I never wanted to fight with my spouse over money because I always saw my parents fight over money. I never wanted that to be a factor in our relationship. And they became really successful. And there are people who are, I was fat and I was bullied constantly and I was so tired of it that I never wanted people to bully me for that again. There's a lot of people in the fitness industry with that. It could be relationships. My mom went through three divorces. I wanna find one person, I wanna get married once, and I wanna be in a really happy marriage, and I want that to be my life priority. I know so many people like that. And so demons are often channeled into something greater, but why is it that they determine a person's trajectory so much? I think one of the things is that demons are a person's loops. So I shot this video a couple weeks back on loops in a person's life. So for example, a loop could be, I believe I'm always gonna be fat, why bother trying? And as a result, that person struggles with their weight for 40 years. The loop could be, I've always been bad with money and my dad told me that only people who inherit money can become millionaires. So I don't even try because I don't believe that it's possible to earn a lot of money. Or that I always date de messed up people, so I'm destined to marry a messed up person. So that's exactly what we do. So the thing is, everyone has certain loops. And I think that in my experience, they're usually financial, dating, or with a person's fitness and their physical body, their health. But the thing is with the demons, the demons are exactly where those loops come from and the loops are where the demons come from. So for example, it could be the young girl who's beaten by her dad endlessly. She's ridiculed at school because she's overweight. And as a result, she develops that lifelong habit of cutting herself and still, when she's 35, 40, 45, she may not be visibly cutting herself, but maybe now she's taking painkillers, or maybe now she's also in an abusive relationship. And so her loop was essentially this self-loathing, this self-hatred, and which also, because of her low self-esteem, started drawing in abusive male partners that take advantage of that. And so the loop becomes the demon. But the thing is, for 99% of humanity, the demon is what crushes people. The demons are would lead to that battle with alcohol addiction and eventually a person's death, like maybe Anthony Bourdain. The demons are the person that takes pills because they, they just can't deal with the trauma in their life and they need that because that is their medicine for right now. The same loop could be taking a donut every day as medicine because you know what? I feel like crap emotionally, but that donut right now is gonna make me feel better for the time being. And the loop could be, you know what? I don't have a lot of money, but I sure like going on those sales shopping sprees because it makes me feel good. And look at this haul I got. This is, look at all this great stuff. I know I'm not doing financially great, but right now it makes me feel good. And so what determines the difference between someone that turns the demon into the fuel and the person that lets the demon turn them into shackles? So the really big thing here is that the demons either become your chains for life or they become the rocket fuel for going to the next level. And what determines that? The story you decide to tell yourself. Because it's crazy. There are so many people that have gone through hardship. And like we talked about, yes, the majority will not make it. They will emulate 
wherever they are raised, their socioeconomic class, the class of their parents, the beliefs, the habits of their parents. But, but, the reason they do that is because they pull evidence from pieces of their life. And that creates the belief. So, the belief, for example, let's say we take that girl I just told you about, who I know many, many, many people that have fallen in that situation. She's... She abuses herself, she hurts herself because she feels like she doesn't deserve it and she wants to feel she's been abused by the male figures in her life. And what is the evidence she gives herself for why she keeps getting stuck like this, right? Number one, she says, her mom. My mom was just like this, that's why I am. Her mom was beaten by all the men she's dated. Always dated horrible quality men. Drug addicts, alcoholics, beaten by them. That's her first line of evidence. Her second line of evidence is, this is these are the guys I always date. That's just what happens. That's her next line of evidence. Her third line of evidence. Yeah, I don't really know when you bring up like, why don't you date this really nice guy that treats you well? Oh, he's too nice. It's kind of weird. I don't know. It feels uncomfortable. That's her third line of evidence. And you go through it. Four, five, six, seven, ten. All these lines of evidence that reinforce the belief that she doesn't deserve a good life with a good guy that treats her well. And that's a story. It's all a story. It's the same story as the person who's broke their whole life, always paycheck to paycheck because they tell themselves, my parents never had a lot of money. We have a family curse around money. The economy sucks. I don't have a college degree. There's no opportunity here. On and on and on and on and on. Ten lines of evidence for that belief that this is why I will never financially be successful. It's what you're really telling yourself. And listen, you could spend your whole life acquiring evidence for this is why I'm going to have and why I deserve a shitty life. You could easily do that. This, like, why I can be miserable, unhealthy, dating horrible quality partners, being a drug addict. You can find any amount of evidence for that. But if you want to change the narrative and turn the demons into the rocket fuel, you have to change the story. And the way you can change the story is only if you provide different evidence. So, how do you provide different evidence? If you're that girl being abused in the horrible relationships, everything's gone to hell, how do you provide different evidence when that has been your life has shown you, no, like, no, forget what you believe, like, this is the facts, like, this is really what's happening. You seek out people that have done the opposite. So if you believe that you're always going to struggle financially, things are not going to go well, your parents were broke, start finding people that were raised in poor families and became very successful because they will show you that, oh, that's just a belief, a story I have. Find women that were beaten and battered, had horrible home lives, and then got out of that, did the emotional work, and now are dating amazing quality men and have great family lives. Find them because they exist, and then that will change your line of evidence for, oh, I can change. And this is the way you can turn those demons from, I'm always going to be fat, everyone in my family's fat, it's too much effort, it's genetic, like I can't afford a gym, I don't have time to go to the gym. All these stories, which are lines of evidence to create the one story, which is, I don't deserve to get this body. I don't deserve to be healthy. All of this is negative evidence for shackles, essentially. And so when you find someone, the busy mother, who's a single mom and has her own company and is fit and is healthy and is happy, then you're going to realize, wow, maybe I'm just telling myself a story and maybe I can decide to change that story and my life will then change. So what I want to leave you with here today is I want you to comment there below and let me know for you, what is one story that has become shackles in your life? All right, guys, I hope that video helps. That is a juicy gut wrencher, but maybe one of the most important videos I've ever shot because after coaching well over 100 people one-on-one, but certainly thousands through my programs or through email or through YouTube comments, I see this a lot. No one wants to deal with the story and the emotion and the traumas. That is where the shackles lie or the rocket fuel comes from. So it is where those demons help determine which way you're going to go. Best way to stay in touch, of course, grab the free personal development and weight loss challenge at modernhealthmonth.com forward slash YouTube and check out my last two videos right here and right here.